everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm sharing with you days 17, 18, 19 of my Inktober drawings using the 31 Witches prompts. Day 17, uh, Sea Witch, uh, Beach Witch, something like that. Um, of course I'm going to be <laughs> making her have a fish tail. She's a mermaid obviously, maybe a siren. Sea Witch I would think of as being a siren, someone who uh, can sing so well that it draws the sailors in the boats up against the reefs and crashes the boats so that they can, uh, I don't know, either have the treasure or have the men, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe a bit of both. So I'm drawing, uh, this is one of the pull-out pages from the pockets in my um, lunch sack journal. If you didn't see me make this, um, I can put the the link in the iCard so that you can see it um, in case you want to make a little tiny journal like this. The pages are four and a half by four and a half inches and the ends of the lunch sacks are sometimes open in the journal so you can put in a pocket page and that's what this one is. I'm just going through the pages, you know, in order. And I do have extra pages at the end if anybody wants to suggest what I might draw in the other four. Um, so, of course, she's got a crown that's made up of seashells because that's where her power is, is uh, in the crown. It helps amplify her voice so that she can sing to the, uh, the sailors and bring them in closer. And she's... Um, near a coral reef so that it just kind of gives perspective instead of just having her floating or whatever I needed to have her be stationary and have the tail be flipped up in order for it to to flip what am I trying to say to show on a four and a half inch page it needed to have I needed to make it big enough that I could draw the features, but then also be able to see the tail so that you know that it's a mermaid or a siren. So that's the reason that I put the coral reef in so that it appears as though she's not swimming, she's stationary, she's holding on to the reef there. If you know what I mean, it's all about perspective. <laughs> Drawing with my mechanical pencil using a soft tubey lead, not super soft, but soft enough. And then I'm using my um, pit artist pins. Uh, I have a pocket of them that has several different sizes. I'm starting out with the brush, which is the fattest one. And then um, moving on to smaller, smaller lines with smaller nibs. I have a bit of a sore throat. <clears throat> which is not good because I'm going on vacation in a couple of days. <laughs> I need to not uh, have a sore throat when I go on vacation. But I've been working really hard on these videos and these drawings and trying to get everything done so that when I am on vacation, you will still have content on the channel. I have to pre-do some things. So I've been working super hard and maybe that's why I'm getting a little bit sick. But who knows why that could be it or it could just be germs. So I think I've used the medium nib and then um, to do some of the detailing on the inside and on the reef and then I'm going to use the extra small nib to complete the facial details because that's a really small little face. <laughs> that's the hardest part is getting in the tiny little face without you know, just one little twitch of your fingers and you can mess up a face. I mean, one little extra bump or line and it totally looks different. So that's always the tricky part. I figured since it was a water drawing that I would use water colors <laughs> to color it. So I'm using my um, SAI uh, Sakura, Sakura watercolor travel set. I think it has 18 or maybe 24 colors and a blending tray. This is a nice watercolor set. I'm also using a high quality brush. Um, it does have the golden Taclon bristles, but it's, um, 
you know, it's it's a more expensive brush than the ones I use in acrylic. And I don't ever use this one in any other things other than watercolor so that I don't wreck it. I decided to make her colors colorful. Um, wanted her to stand out from the blue background. So I'm using yellows, oranges, and a warm red on her tail and her shell crown and um, also on her shell bra. I didn't leave her topless like I sometimes do on my mermaids. <laughs> I don't really think it's realistic that they would be wearing shells. That just sounds so uncomfortable, but that's an invention of people who you know, didn't want to leave them in their natural state. Perhaps I could uh, have the scales come up over those or something if it, you know, I don't know. It's always my debate. Do I leave her naked or not? I don't know. Since she has a shell crown anyway, it's, it's cool to have a shell bra. So then for the reef, I'm filling in the rock that would be underneath. I think this is um, probably lava rock, like a porous lava rock that has come down from an island and poured into the sea and then the, the reef has started to grow on top of it with some sea grasses and some corals. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Not that long ago I went to the island of Kona, Hawaii with my mother. Um, she really wants to travel a lot now that she's, you know, she can. So we've been going a few places. I'm, the next trip I'm taking is also with her. And we saw real lava at the Volcano National Park, like actual lava bubbling away. It was crazy. And also steam vents, things like that. So to finish up, I'm just adding a few highlights with my white Posca pen now that I've dried this watercolor. And there you have day 17 Sea Witch. So for day 18, the prompt was Undertaker Witch. And I thought about that for a while and I even did a Google search of Undertaker because I just really wasn't sure what I should draw. Like, that's creepy, you know? That's just creepy. And I just, I didn't know. <laughs> so in the Google search, I came up with a lot of um, fan art for two different things. One of them is apparently some type of a wrestler named The Undertaker and uh, a lot of people have drawn pictures of him. And then the other thing that came up often was um, some sort of a, an anime or Japanese style drawing of something named The Undertaker in one of the one of the anime I guess you don't call them cartoons. Um, I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't draw that style, but that came up a lot. Those are the two things that came up. But then there were a few sprinkled in of a Reaper type person. And that appealed to me the most. Um, the idea that this spooky thing and, you know, flowing smoky robes comes with its scythe and takes you away when you pass on is interesting. Um, obviously invention of human brains, you know, to try to think about it, but um, that's what I decided to be inspired by is a reaper type figure. So I'm making a very thin person. Obviously all my witches are female. I haven't drawn any male witches. That's so sexist of me. Um, but that's just, that's just what I think of when I think of which I think of a female. Um, I know that's not accurate, but I made sure that any 
any portion of the figure, like the arms and things, were very thin and bony looking, and the face sunken in, um, skinny, very angular shoulders and pointy elbows and things like that. Um, inked it, of course, in my same style using heavy and lighter lines. And then to color this, I'm going to use pan pastels and also pastel pencils for the more uh, teeny tiny details. The pan pastels, I use the soft tools, but even the most pointy one, I can't get teeny tiny detail, obviously, because, you know, it's, it's a sponge. Sponges don't really uh, work for tiny details. They're, they're just too big. So I'm, I used a gray and a green in the background, kind of, and then um, I'm using black and then a, uh, what's basically a Payne's gray, it's probably even called Payne's gray, I bet, I just didn't look, to kind of add really smoky stuff around the background and then of course fill in the robe, which would be black. And then I'm using my pen eraser to erase. Um, the neat thing about pan pastel is it can be erased. So you can add your highlights by erasing rather than bringing back in a white or something like that, which is pretty fun. Um, then I am getting out a couple different grays from the, the pastel pencils. These I can sharpen and get in very fine details. Continuing to use my tiny pen eraser to erase my highlights when I keep smearing. The thing about pastels is they're smeary. So if your hand goes over something, you know, it's going to smear. Then I go back in with my pen eraser. And this was so fun to go back in and add a bunch of swirls and highlights and things using my pen eraser. That was fun. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the most fun I had. <laughs> So she's spooky. Um, she doesn't have any pupils or irises in her eyes. She's She's got the creep factor going on. She's got a skull in her hand and a scythe in the other, you know. I mean, that's creepy. Then just to finish this off, I used, um, what's that stuff called? Spectra, Spectra Fix Fixative, which is a non-toxic, non-stinky one, to spray it down and keep it... Um, from smearing onto the next page, hopefully. And what are we to? Day 19. Day 19 prompt is flapper, which, which would be a silly looking socialite person from the 60s. I'm not sure. The 50s? I don't know. I just, I know what they look like. They usually are wearing like a tank dress with spaghetti straps and they like to wear feathers and sequins and gems and jewels and things like that. So since there was a bit of pastel on this page and it was kind of grungy looking, I went ahead and put a piece of tissue paper on there and collaged it down. The tissue paper has silver stars and so I used a gloss medium because I didn't want to ruin the shininess of the stars. The problem with a gloss medium is it's hard to draw over. It's too slick and the, the pencil just slides off it. So I just gave up and uh, drew with my pen. You know, this panics me <laughs> to draw with my pen. Um, yeah. Also, of course, all, anything that I would erase, I can't erase because it's pen. So when I go to draw the feathers, I've already drawn the hair, um, the he feathers onto the headband, drawn the hair already, and so the feathers are going over the hair, which um, I wish I would have drawn the feathers first and then filled in the hair, but I didn't. So then that, of course, affects what I use to color with. Also, the fact that it has a gloss medium over the whole thing affects what I have to color with. So I decided to use acrylic paint, um, starting out with this Liquitex Portrait Pink mixed with a little bit of the DecoArt Fluid Media Line Titanium White. Titanium White is opaque, and so it's great for mixing in if you need to cover things up, and I wanted to cover up 
those stars because I didn't think she looked right with stars on her face. I mean, it's a thing. She might have painted them on there, but, you know, maybe not in that era. <laughs> that might be more 80s. So I decided to go with red accents. I thought that that would be pretty appropriate for um, the era. And then she's got blonde hair, bleach blonde hair, and uh, kind of in a bob style. I should have made it a little bit shorter, um, I think, looking at it now, but it's fine. It's She just hasn't gotten around to having her hair set yet. <laughs> she wanted to go out and, uh, you know, go to the speakeasy or something. <laughs> so I uh, blend some of that red, which is a CAD red hue, um, Deco Art Media Line Fluid Acrylic, Blend that in with the pinks and the whites and give her some pretty strong rouge. We call it blush now, but I think they called it rouge back then. Also very strong red lip. And I bring in some gold metallic fluid paint to give her some metallic -y highlights in her hair. Back in the day, if you bleached your hair, it got very brassy looking, and I thought that the the gold would give that look. This uh, this drawing is very hurried, so it's definitely not perfect by any means. <laughs> so I dry it up, and then I start. Um, oh, I decide to add these stars that have been sitting on my desk. They're uh, glitter rub-on stars, and I figure that that's the magic coming out of her wand. She has a wand instead of a cigarette. She would be holding a, like a long cigarette holder in her hand, you know. But since she's a witch, she needs a wand instead. Decided to make her headband black for contrast. And then I'm adding in uh, my lines, of course. When you paint over something with acrylic paint, you obliterate the lines. So any of my illustration lines are gone, <laughs> long gone. So I'm adding them back in, which means you basically drawn, inked, and redrawn, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> but that's just kind of how you do it. And then what do I do? Oh yes, I decide to put in silver. Um, this is a, sh a silver Sharpie water-based fine pen uh, comes in a set with a copper and a gold and then the silver together and they are water-based they're not smelly I don't like smelly pens <laughs> so then I get out these stick-on gems and start putting those around in different areas um, because they're cool and because it needed more bling put some on her choker necklace, I give her a ruby ring, and I put some at the base of the the headband with the, f the feathers. Decide to bring out the stars a little bit more, the glittery ones, by adding some pin. And I do end up putting a piece of washi tape on that doesn't get on the camera. But anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Uh, Oh yeah, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and share.